part two, one of my favorite parts of the book is the fact that he talked about how nobody owes you anything, okay? And we live in a very entitled society. And if you go through life entitled, that means you believe that there are certain people in society who should give you something. But if you're entitled, just in general, you might believe people owe you something that actually literally owe you nothing. And that leads to bitterness and resentment and hate and jealousy and envy. And that causes you to do very stupid things I honestly just become a hater. So what do you do? You just have to let go and become a worker and realize that no one owes you anything and not expect anything from anybody. Because if you're expecting things from people all of the time, once again, you're going to get entitled. Okay? If anything, expect the worst. If you're going to expect something, become entitled to having a bad day. <laughs> Don't do that because that's also very negative. But just realize no one owes you anything. You have to work for everything. Even if you believe in God, I believe in God. But you need to have the mentality that I need to work. God gave you two arms, two legs, a brain, and a body to do things for. Don't just think you can pray and then not do anything and he's going to move in your life. He had people out here doing stuff. Okay, listen. David saw Goliath, right? A lot of people saw Goliath. A lot of people was just talking. I'm pretty sure there was some biblical bar. There was that. And it was like... Bro, about to hit a freestyle. Philistines, what does it really mean? I got the sword on me. Cut Goliath up. Make a giant cream. Oh, and all his boys were like, oh. Then, but then someone said, but you gonna do something? But you gonna do something? Philistines, shoulders, soldiers, they was like, hey, you, you doing something? No, he ain't do nothing. But David was like, you know what, man? I go to bear, I go to lion, I'm protecting these sheep, I'm responsible, so I'm going to go and take care of business. So he didn't, and he didn't just talk, he went to the king, he was anointed first, that's a whole other thing, but went to the king, told him, hey, I know what I stand for, I know what I've done, he's messing with my people, I don't like that, let me go handle him. King's like, yo, I don't think you can do it. David's like, man, forget you. Don't need your armor. All I got is a rock and a sling. Boom, bow, bam, it's done. I don't even remember what this part of the book I was supposed to be talking about. Oh, no one owes you anything. How does that relate to David? I'm not sure, but it should also be like David. <laughs> so anyway, nobody owes you anything. You have to, oh, you have to work. So yeah, David saw what was happening. He actually went to work with that slingshot. You know what I mean? And he didn't expect because he was anointed that he wouldn't have to do anything because um, he was the son of Jesse and basically prophet went to his house and he was like looking for all these sons he was like yeah I'm about to anoint somebody to be the next king and then he was like nah Jesse's like here are all my sons and then the prophet was like nah you got one more you ain't thinking about your boy and then David was outside with the sheep working okay listen god likes workers more than people who just pray no cap god likes workers more than people who just pray biblical proof let me get into it real quick let me get into it there's a verse in the bible it's a new testament basically was this like this guy has like a son i think and there's like basically his dad's like out in the field and then his dad's like hey yo son like you i'm about to go work in the field like you gonna come by later you gonna work and then the more the story is this if the son said yes and didn't come by then he would have basically been condemned as a horrible son but if the son said no it still came by that's better so at the end of the day i feel like it's better to not pray for something and work for it then pray for something and not work for it it's better to do both but if you're just praying but you're not working faith without works is dead faith don't get you into heaven but it ain't gonna get you nowhere on earth 
Sorry. It's like faith. Faith gets you into heaven, but faith without works on earth will not get you anywhere. And you can look at Proverbs to go over that. So, 50 Cent saying, listen, it's got some biblical truth to it, man. You have to be a worker. You have to be smart. You have to be wise. You have to use your brain. You have to use experience. Anyone who is in the Bible who has done anything of significance in life. And I'm talking about pastors too. If you think about Billy Graham, Robbie Zacharias, those dudes had strategies. Those dudes had brains. They didn't just sit down and pray and just wait. A lot of people are getting scared because of the pandemic and things right now. And I'm just like, bro, stop. Like, just go to work. Do your job. If you're concerned about something, be concerned. Because, you know, like, you should be. God gave us these emotions for a reason. Like, you want to pack a travel bag? Pack a travel bag. Go back to work. Because if it doesn't happen, and you was worried the whole time, and now you broke. Broke man, broke woman, don't eat. So, that is that. Be a worker. Be a worker. And once again, I went on a rant, so I don't know what this is about. But, I feel like you're going to get it. So, the title of this video will probably be 50 Cent Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter Book Review Part 2. And biblical guidance. That's all. Peace out. Happy guys. Are.